like I say, we're going to be looking at Matthew 7. So if you want to turn there in your Bibles, Matthew 7, just the three verses, 24 to 27 this morning. And as I said, it's a very familiar passage uh, to us. Uh, and again, we might know it best by that, that popular child song. Uh, and sometimes the danger with that is that when we are very familiar with passages like this, we can, when we're reading them in our daily reading, we can gloss over them very quickly because you know, we know it you know, and, and we have a, uh, something in our mind that that's our understanding of that passage and yet what I want to do this morning is revisit that and I'm sure there are, there are things there that we can dig down into um, that if we just spend that time over on this passage I'm sure you'll be, you'll be blessed as I've been as I've been preparing it. So how we're going to do it is, is um, we're going to read it through uh, and then I'll give some sort of brief observations and then we're going to take each part of this parable that Jesus is giving uh, in sections and just kind of explore each, each one of those uh, and then there'll be some application at the end uh, having looked through each part and each person in, in the parable. So here we've got Jesus speaking um, at the close of the Sermon on the Mount, very obviously one of the most famous sermons ever given, uh, and here he's bringing things to a close. And so what we're going to see in the first verse there, he's going to um, naturally wrap it up and say about those that have been listening to the words that he's been saying and what our response should be in light of that. You know, this today is going to be important for us to examine what the foundations of our lives are, um, how we build those foundations, the dangers of not heeding what Jesus has, has got to say, um, and what the objective of those foundations are. So that's, that's the kind of the overall points that we want to draw out from the text. So let's read. Let's read through the passage, and then we're going to go back through and break it down. Starting at verse 24 of Matthew 7. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Like I say, very familiar words, and it's very easy to just move on into the next few verses without really stopping to consider what Jesus is saying here. So, just starting there in the first verse, whenever you see that word, therefore, it's always important to check what it's there for, and so this is on the back of Jesus giving some very important teachings um, on the Sermon on the Mount and some amazing truths that he gave to, to all of the people there. And so he's, he's asking us to consider what he's just gone and said, but it's more than that and, and we'll explore that as we, as we go on because this isn't the only place where Jesus spoke and these aren't the only sayings within this sermon that Jesus had given. And so he's asking here for an acknowledgement of what he's been saying. He says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, you know, within that there's implied the fact that you've listened to Jesus and what he's had to say. Jesus is saying these sayings of mine, it's emphatic in the Greek there. He's, he's saying, heed what I'm saying, listen to, to the words of truth, the words of life that I'm giving. And by doing so, if you go on to listen to Jesus and the things that he's saying, you're acknowledging him as Lord. The warning comes later on there that if you don't, you can hear the words from 26 onwards when he goes on to look at the second builder, but implied in that is the fact that that second builder doesn't listen, doesn't heed what Jesus had been saying and, and the teachings that he's given. And so we cannot call Jesus Lord and Master of our life if we don't listen to what he says. It seems quite obvious, but actually implied in the fact that we say, you know, dear Lord Jesus is that you're going to do what he says because he's Lord. We see that with Peter when Peter tells Jesus later on in, in Jesus' ministry not to do something and Jesus says to him, you know, that Peter says, Lord, no, you can't have those two words together. You can't say Lord and then no to Jesus because he's master. And so 
he's saying here, he's, he's asking us to acknowledge him as Lord by listening to, to the words that he's going to have to say. Notice there as well, it's, it's Jesus that says, I will liken him to a wise man. So whoever hears God's word and God's truth taught, it's Jesus as the one who likens him. It's him who is judge, who's looking for the response to his word and his truth and his teaching. It's, it's Jesus is the one who's examining those things. And so, again, within that comes this whole idea of him being Lord. But it's a conscious decision to be obedient or not to be obedient, to listen or to not to listen. It doesn't say here that he, he's asking us to follow them, but implied in that is the, the fact that you don't have to listen and you don't have to acknowledge his word because we're going to see a builder who doesn't do that. And so it's, it's looking at this conscious decision. He's not forcing us to do it. And so in response to him being our master and Lord, we should then follow and be obedient you know it says later on he'll go on to say that his sheep hear his voice um, but not only hear his voice but follow and obey as well and so there's just a few sort of thoughts before we get into the first section of, of what I'm going to be speaking on which is if you notice there are two builders quite obvious maybe it may seem but there are two builders but actually there's more similarities to these builders then you might have first thought again because the song kind of just says one builds his house on the sand one builds his house on the rock and it seems that they're quite distinct but actually on closer examination they're very similar and so they both build houses um, they both finish building their houses and have both had a plan to build a house saw it through to completion and have something that looks on the surface as a house you know they both finished that work if you notice as well, both houses are going to go on to go through the storm. And so they're, they're, there's a lot of similarities. The only thing different from the two houses actually isn't visible at all. It's the foundations that are going to be the difference between the two houses that the builders are going to, to build. And so it's, it's that, but that on the surface isn't seen. That will only be revealed once the storm has come and then we'll see the results from that. Both men, both builders, heard the words and the teachings of Jesus uh, and both build houses in response to that, but both just use different foundation methods. But we're going to see that the differences don't come until after, after the storm. Either a house in this life that we're building as our, our spiritual walk with God is either going to stand or it's going to fall. Uh, and, and that will be dependent on what the foundation is and that we've that we've laid down now a question for you today is is what are you building your house and your life upon is it the lord jesus christ or is it external things other securities that we can um, feel that we don't necessarily need to base everything on god's word and god's truth but it might be that we we build our lives on our families or our friends or our jobs or our bank accounts or just the country that we live in and the security that it's provided but as we're going to see uh, and as I'm sure that you you'll all be able to testify to is that storms do come and they're going they shake those very things uh, to expose those foundations um, and so we're going to read on there notice as well um, that it doesn't say here but elsewhere we know in scripture if you want to turn to psalm 127 this is going to give us the context as we as we move into the wise builder um, and and what the wise builder does so if you turn to psalm 127 just verse one okay So it says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Just again, let's read that first verse. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. 
Now this is going to speak of the fact that we can try and do all things in our own strength and build our life and serve, Lord, serve the Lord and do many things in his name. But actually if God's not with us and God's not in it, we do it in vain because if it's not by his spirit, then it's not going to stand and those foundations won't hold when the storms come. And that's the, 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 the thing I want to get across is that both builders here go ahead with their lives building their lives on foundations that they think are going to stand and may stand for part of the time but actually you know sometimes we can go about our lives thinking that we're doing things for God and actually God's not in it at all it could be just something that we're doing from our own selfish ambition and so we do need to check you know the reasoning for why we do things for God is it for praise of other people is it because God has has called us to do those things or is it just a sense of obligation that we've always done those things and so we just do them. But actually, it's, it's examining the reasons why we, we do the things we do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, unless God builds the house, those who labor do it in vain. Um, and so, the wise builder here is building in God's strength and in God's power, not on his own. And, and so, it reminds us that God must be with that builder, must be with us in our lives if, if anything's going to stand or last. You know, it, it brings to mind when in, um, in Genesis where the, the people got together and they said, let us build a tower to God, to reach God, to aspire to God, to attain to, to that level. And so man, man doing that in his own strength to try and reach God, he wasn't, God wasn't in that at all. And we see the results of that uh, and God brings that work to nothing. But sometimes it's important just to, to check actually what is the motivation of our heart for the things that we do and the way that we build our lives uh, and, and, and what those foundations are. Acts 20, verse 32, we're going to see here that God, again, not only builds the house, but there's a number of different ways in which he does that. So Acts 20, verse 32, says this, So now, brethren, I commend to you God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. It's twofold there, the nature of that work. When we are saved by grace through faith, we're saved to an inheritance. And that's also ties directly into this, this idea about building a foundation because the foundations of our lives are going to have eternal consequences and so it's not purely for this life but what is to come and so here he says i've saved you for an inheritance that it might last beyond death as it were and so the things that we do for for christ are the only things that are going to last um, but it, the first part there often we, we 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 get the inheritance part that we've been saved for an inheritance but actually that he's able to build us up um, in his grace you know, recognizing that it's not in our own strength, but it's only possible by his grace because of what he's poured out upon us, freely given to us, not anything that we deserve, but again, acknowledging that God is the builder and he's doing that work in us, in our lives, um, as Lizzie prayed, not in anything of, of our own merit, but actually just allowing him to do that by his grace. Colossians 2 talks about um, the fact that we're going to be built up Colossians 2 7 if you want to take the reference down built up and established in the faith so again another part of of being built up is being built up in our faith you'll often hear Paul talking about that that idea so God is building us up in our in our faith there as well so at all times it's it's recognizing that we can't do these things in our own strength but acknowledging that God is the one who's at work doing that work of sanctification and building us up in our life and allowing him to do it you know, I think the, the biggest hindrance in our lives can be ourselves and how we, we limit God in that uh, and prevent him from building us up in our faith and in grace because we try so hard to do things in our own strength. Whenever we can, we think things are going well and so I can do this now. I've got this covered. I feel secure in my position. And so because things and conditions are all right, our tendency is not to trust in God in those moments, but move away from that and remember what the foundation is, that God is the one who is doing that work in us and think, well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'm a pretty good person. You know, I'm 
particularly compared to that person over there or that person over there. And so we can start get self-reliant and forget that it, it can only be done through God in our lives. You know, ultimately we look to one day to a city um, whose builder and maker is God. And so knowing that he's got that plan and purpose in our life, know that he's got a plan and purpose for your life because you have a, a role and an important place in that city. You know, you look around us at the, the world that God's created uh, and the amazing architect and builder that he is, surely it's better to allow him to work in our lives, to be the builder, to, to, to just pour out his grace in our lives and to, to live and love one another in, in that grace that he's given to us. So just that first point there, just about having God as, as builder. So I guess unless God is in it, we labor in vain. Let's look at the, the different foundations here. There are two different foundations and some interesting background context that again was, was um, new to, to myself. Um, and actually the sand around the Lake of Galilee um, that Jesus is gonna be speaking of during the summer months, which is when they would have, uh, you wouldn't build in the, in the winter when it was raining, was rock hard and actually very, very, very solid. And so what would needed to be done, a wise builder would have to build and dig down at least 10 feet down to get to the bedrock in order to lay the foundation for the house that he was gonna build. In my mind, sometimes when, we, when you sing the song, you think of a builder finding an elevated rock above ground um, maybe that's because I, I, I'm not very practical and I've never built a house, but actually it's not that at all. The, the, the wise builder has to dig down through the surface level sand at least 10 feet to get to the bedrock. That would have been the conditions. And so that's what Jesus is referencing here. It, it's about digging down to the bedrock, the, 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 the foundations there, because the area was notorious for flooding in winter. The, the rain was... was torrential and notoriously torrential and so if you didn't dig down to those foundations the uh, the results would be catastrophic and disastrous because your house wouldn't wouldn't stand and so actually through large parts of the year that house would be fine you know it could it could stand those conditions but it wasn't until the storms came in the winter that that we would see that house struggle you know when I think of the, the sand, you have to think about this idea about building our, our lives upon our own flesh, about our own efforts, our own works, our, our own external security. But the problem with the sand is, is that the sand is going to change, it's going to shift and it's going to move and it's going to be unable to take the weight that's going to come upon it during those storms. And so, you know, how often we try to do things for God in our own strength and they fail. I can speak of many times that you attempt things in your own efforts and, and you fall flat on your face. Um, but actually, there's a, a comfort and a peace that comes from knowing that it's not in our own strength and in our own effort, but it's by his grace that these things are possible. And, and he is able to build a house and make it stand. And, and praise God for that. It's not in our strength, but in, in his Bob spoke last week about these things uh, that can really beset us when we're Christians, the three C's he called them. Uh, and really just as I was thinking about the passage and thinking about the fact that this house is fine, that this person who's heard the word of God, who's gone away, built his life, thinks that everything is fine and is fine at that current point. Just the dangers of that, that the fact that during that time we can become so complacent well, that was one of the things that he talked about. Um, the fact that we can get so comfortable in those times. Uh, and actually, then we only start doing things out of convenience. But actually, these, these seasons where things seem to be okay have us a tendency to think, actually, it's okay to build on the sand. Nothing has gone wrong. I'm okay. We're doing okay uh, as, as we walk through. But those conditions, they don't last. And one thing that's for certain is the storms will come and do come and that's the thing that's going to expose this 
this foundation built on a life that actually isn't deep enough to, to withhold. You know, it has to be Christ in us. It has to be Christ in me for these things to, to survive and to, to endure the storms that will come. You know, perhaps our security and our foundations and the thing that we take comfort in or we've built our life upon, like I said earlier, is our family, you know. It's a close family. That could be the thing that we've, we know is secure and that's the thing that will get us through those tough times. Or it could be, you know, that we're financially very stable and we're, that's going to see me through any difficult times because I've got X amount of money in my bank account and so what, I'm okay regardless of what's going to come into my life. Or that I've got fantastic friends or a fantastic church with brothers and sisters who love me but if our lives aren't built on the foundation that is Jesus Christ, all of those things are unable to keep our house from falling and our life from falling apart because the only true foundation is Jesus Christ. Those things aren't bad in of themselves, but they are unable to prevent our houses, our lives, our walks with God from enduring the storm. They may be part of it, that Jesus would use those things in our life, but actually, they're just like the sand, temporary, changing, um, unstable, and only really good for a season and for a time. You know, the builder here, if you were building a house in that time, and, and what Jesus is, is implying, is saying that he's opted not to dig down to the bedrock to build his house. And it would be the same charge to us in that if we choose not to do this and build on the, the bedrock and dig deep down the foundations on the Lord Jesus Christ, suggest that it's only done because we've not been bothered to or taken the time to or we've been too busy or too lazy to dig our foundations deep on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that builder knows that he can dig through that sand, but those conditions are tough. You know, if you've ever tried to dig out in the garden this time of year, it's hard. And that's why I get Annabelle to do that um, at home. And, and, and so that, it's not easy work. But again, you would choose... The only way you would do it is because it's not convenient to do it. It's hard work. It's, you, know, you have to put the time in to, to dig down to the bedrock. You know, it says 10 feet would have been tough. And so Jesus is drawing on that analogy about the fact that you really need to build it on that foundation. That's, that's deep, deep down. And that doesn't, it's not just something that you can just get like that. If you think about when Jesus gave the parable of the sower, and it talks about the seed that falls on the shallow soil. When things got tough and the, and the sun came, that, you know, the seed didn't take root and it was gone because it couldn't endure those difficult conditions. And so it might be that I haven't got time to read my Bible. I haven't got time to spend, you know, hours and hours in prayer and I'm not this isn't a legalistic trip about length of time but if you don't dig down deep into your bible um, and and here we 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 see that it's actual effort this isn't a passive thing where it's just gonna it's gonna happen you know um, God does the work but you need to allow him to do that in your life by spending time with him in his word in his presence with his people and so you know you don't have to. The second builder didn't. He heard the words. Notice that he heard the words of Jesus. So it kind of for me, that speaks of people that are in church because they hear the truth of God and yet don't put into practice the teachings that Jesus has laid down and given to us. And so that's the warning that if you don't set your foundations right, when the storms come, you know, it can be disastrous. So again, it brings us then to the, the good um, the good foundation. So we see there in the, in the first verses, the man who built his house upon the rock, the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. You see that bedrock, that's constant, it's immovable, it's secure, it's deep down, it's long lasting, it's not going anywhere, it's faithful. You know, you can build your house and you know it's going to stand when it, when it all comes to, to a head. Proverbs 10.25 says the righteous man has an everlasting foundation. 
you know, what God is doing in your life, what Jesus has done and the things done now will have eternal consequences, you know, past when we die. And so that is why it's so significant to get our foundations right now and to make sure that's what we've built our life upon, that, that bedrock, you know. Not a rock above the ground, you know, that there's this, this song, you kind of go up, up, starting almost from a, a position above ground, but actually you've got to dig down deep first. To, to lay that foundation. Luke 6, 48, Jesus gives this, um, Luke gives a slightly different version of this. Let me just read it to you. Luke 6, 48, Jesus says this. It's a parable of the, the two foundations, but Luke records it slightly differently here for us. But why do you call me Lord and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it. You know, we have a faith in Jesus that cannot be shaken. That is the faith that we want to be building. For it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. So again, different passage, but Jesus lays it out there about digging deep in the word. I promise you, if you dig deep into God's word, you will not be disappointed. It is rich and has everything that you need way more than you could ever mine or excavate out of it there is treasures in in the word that are, are beyond measure and they're there for you but in a sense they're not going to mine themselves it's up for you you know by the power of god's spirit for him to, uh, he'll show you those things if you dig down deep into the truth about what those things actually mean you know jesus is the rock he's, this is what he's talking about as himself he's saying about these two builders uh, and talking about this bedrock and this foundation but he himself is that rock so that is is the fact that good builders if you want to be a good builder for god in that sense you have to make, you have to lay good foundations and it's enabled by god and in and in his strength it's going to take extra thought and energy and, and time, but you've got to dig down those 10 feet through the sand in tough conditions because life is tough, life is hard. But Jesus is there and, and you know, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 to 15 says this, if we, you know, this is the reward for those um, who do that. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11 to 15 listen to what, what Paul says here we'll read from from verse 9 for we are God's fellow workers you are God's field you are God's building according to the grace of God which was given to me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another builds on it earlier we read um, about the apostles foundation in Ephesians but let each one take heed how he builds on it for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid which is Jesus Christ now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay straw each one's work will become clear for the day as the day of judgment will declare it and it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is if anyone's work which he has built on it endures he will receive a reward if anyone's work is burned he will suffer loss but he himself will be saved yet as so through fire so again this idea of laboring now building foundations that aren't really they're not although they'll see you through this world and the storms that come in this world it's for an eternal purpose and destination that's why you're laying down this time with jesus christ now that you you're you might build upon him alone and the things that you do are only for him and because of him. It's about having that eternal perspective, you know, and, and really thinking about what am I doing in my life? Where do I spend my time? What am I investing in? Because actually investing in Jesus Christ and spending that time with him and building that relationship with him 
is the thing that's going to yield results that stand for eternity. Whereas other things, as, as kind of harmless as they may be, if we pour our time and build our foundations on them, they're not going to last. They're going to be burnt away. And so we have eternal consequences for the foundations we build upon in our lives. You know, the most important stone that they would lay in those times was the foundation or cornerstone. And this is something we, we sing about. And we see that in, in Isaiah 28, 16, it will talk about this foundation stone that's going to be laid, the chief cornerstone that ultimately they would reject the people of Israel. That's Jesus Christ. You know, he was going to be the stone that they rejected because actually they didn't want him. They didn't want him to take center stage in their life to be savior. And, and that can be the same with us. Jesus can be part of our lives, but he needs to be center of our lives. And that stone, that cornerstone, dictates the position of the rest of the house. It's the first one that's laid. And so after that, it will set the precedent for, for everything else about where in your life or in your house, using that uh, idiom about life and house there, everything else goes. It determines the structure that cornerstone determines how you how you do everything from that point is dictated to by that first stone that you lay that that cornerstone and so you know they used to write on the cornerstones who built the house they used to, to denote the architect and the maker and that should be evident in your life we should be able to see that it's Jesus and it's God that's working in you because it should just be he should be the reason for our existence our our master passion as it were our, our first love and so that's something that you know we have to to check because very quickly we can start worshiping something else we've been looking at that in judges and, and how the people of israel were so prone to doing that but this idea about christ being the rock is i mean you could spend vast amounts of time looking at that and i'd encourage you just to do a word study on that in in your concordance um, and just look about this idea about God being the rock you see it all the way through through Psalms um, in Samuel and Deuteronomy and Daniel Jesus being the rock you know he talks about that um, in first Corinthians as well so Jesus is the rock the foundation stone okay both men both builders here it says in verse 26 but everyone who hears these sayings of mine you know both of them heard God's word both of them heard the truth and we know from Romans 10 that faith comes by hearing and so that's the first stage um, it suggests that that's open to all that anybody can hear God's word and God's truth but notice only one obeys only one listens but both hear and there's a difference between that we can hear things, you know, people can be speaking to us, but we're not really listening, particularly then because we don't then go on and do what they say. That's something that I recognise in my own life, I'm not very good, I, I can struggle to listen on occasion sometimes. You can, Annabelle's laughing because she knows that's the case, but sometimes you know what I mean, you can just be, you can hear, but you're not really listening because listening implies that you're going to go and do what's been said or what's discussed and you're actually taking it in so we can be here sunday after sunday after sunday listening or hearing but if we don't put it into practice then it's like this man who builds his house on the sand and so we're called not to to, to be like that um, but james he puts it really well not me james the writer james um, james 1 22 to 25 i'll just read those verses so he says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not forgetful, hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. There's an action associated with hearing the words. Jesus says that whoever does these words that I say, it's great to come and listen and to hear the, the, the Bible being taught. And not, not, we wouldn't criticize that in any form. But actually, if you don't apply it to your life and you don't live in obedience to what it says, then you can just become a hearer of the word only and not a doer. You know, it's a two part process. You know, it talks about 
wisdom. And God's wisdom is different from the world's wisdom. We see some pretty uh, ridiculous things being professed to be wisdom in our world and our culture today. You know, the things that we teach or allow our children to be taught as science or as logical or as right they're not wise at all and, and we know actually they're harmful for, for children to, to learn those things but actually that's the world's wisdom that's what's believed to give the most inclusive or the most you know broad upbringing for, for children but actually those things are, are detrimental and harmful and that's what the world says and professes to be wise in, in the things that it says and advocates for you know man today is wise in his own eyes that's Isaiah 55 21 and so this wisdom here it says it's like a, um, a wise man who built his house it's talking about a practical wisdom you know about applying the things that he says there it's not something that you can take shortcuts to do you know God is looking for obedience more so than sacrifice and so you know if you lack wisdom James says to ask for it and actually God's wisdom again read Proverbs you'll see the value that the wisdom of God is. And actually, it's not the wisdom of the world. It's completely different. God's wisdom is to send his son on a cross to die for us that we might have life. It flies in the face of all human logic and understanding, but that is his ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. But I know who I'd rather trust, the God of this universe. Um, to ignore him is, is foolish. That's what we're going to see. It's foolishness. Can we call Jesus Lord and then intentionally ignore what he's saying or not obey it? Can, can you do that? I would suggest that we, we can't and that we need to look at that. You know, Jesus says about these sayings of mine back at the start there. But ultimately, Jesus is the word, isn't it? We should read that in John 1. In the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Jesus, John is speaking of Jesus Christ. So... All of this, you know, all of this, this is all about Jesus. All scripture points to him. It says that um, in John 5 and 39, all scripture, everything in the law and the prophets points to Jesus. And so it's not just here what he's saying in terms of the Sermon on the Mount, but your entire Bible. So you need to read it and get to know it and, and then live by it. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is God-breathed. It's all about him. He's central to everything and only possible. Um, only things are possible through him because he sustains everything. You know, we sung earlier amazing songs about Jesus, all for Jesus. And that's what he's, he's alluding to here is it's, he is central. He is the word. He is the rock. And so he's the thing that we can build our, our life upon, you know, about digging deep. You know, Psalm 1 talks about being like a tree rooted and again, you can, you can see in Ephesians and in, in Colossians about this whole idea about being rooted or dug deep down into him, into, into his word, into his truth, because that's where the life is. He, he is the life. And then moving on, you know, I said earlier that through these things, one of the things that's certain in here is that both of these houses of these two builders will endure the storms um, and one stands and one remains but both go through the storms the storms of life don't discriminate they affect everyone um, and so all we know for sure is that they're, that they're going to come at some stage or another that we will endure these things and storms will will come into our lives if you think about job and the things that he suffered we studied that recently and just what happened in his life and how the storms came jesus himself endured storms in his own life you know, he was rejected by his people. His own brothers and family didn't even acknowledge him. He was falsely accused, beaten and tortured. And many other times they tried to kill him. You know, he had to endure many difficult things uh, in his life. So he knows what it's like to live as a man. He lost people in his life. People died. You know, it says that when Jesus, when Lazarus died, that he, he grieved. Like, you know, Jesus had compassion because of, he was moved in his spirit. And so he, he knows what it's like to endure these storms that come. But you know what? As I said earlier, it takes a storm to reveal the foundation 
of our life and of our house and what we've built upon. It's only in those storms that we see really where our faith is and what it's built upon. Before that, everything can look fine on the outside and then when the storm comes, everything can fall apart very quickly. You know that in my own life, that, that was the case. You know, I was in a position in my life with my family that I thought, you know, nothing could shake that at all. Nothing could, could I was well in a church, I was serving, I had, I, you know, I had a close family, I had all of those things, I was working, I had a, um, a wife and a child and, and all of those things, but actually a storm came and the things that I thought would stand, none of that stood. Well, my wife, she's here, so she stood. But other than that, lots of other things fell apart, fell away, things that I had placed my trust and my reliance upon. But you know what? In the time after that, I realized that the only things that mattered and really truly that afterwards that were left was my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's the thing that remains. All of those other things, like I said earlier, it's wonderful. We have a wonderful church body here. But it's not what I would build my foundation of my life upon because things can change and do change and storms do come and and same thing with a job and a family things can happen and things can come in and you know the only thing that we can trust on and rely upon is is God and and is the Lord Jesus Christ because he's faithful he's dependable everything else is movable it's all you know that's that famous hymn that says all other ground is sinking sand. Anything else you build upon, as sure as you think it may be, it isn't. And, and, and I can testify to that, that the, the only thing that remained for me, the one, you know, we've seen that song, one thing remains, and that's the Lord Jesus. But praise God for storms. I, I know that might be really difficult to, to hear or for even to imagine. You know, Jesus says, consider it all joy when you go through trials and persecution um, later on, but you know, better now that we get our foundations exposed for what they are than when it's too late, then we get to the end and then our, you know, what's exposed is, is there's nothing really of any substance there, like, the, like the, the foolish man. But praise God that he does these things in a, in a way that shows us where our dependency is and, and, and means that we can get things right. And actually, there's a, a calm and a peace that can be had through the storm, in the eye of the storm. Bob talked about that last week, that he's with us in it. It's not that they're particularly enjoyable, but we know that they're certain they are going to come at various different stages. And so, you know, keep us reliant on the rock that is higher than I. You know, that's what the the psalmist says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so it keeps you dependent on actually the only thing that's stable in this world that everybody will say to you, there's no certainty, you can't, not my investments in this or this market or that market. Nothing is secure, nothing is certain other than the Word of God. Um, and that thing, and the Word of God will stand forever. So it's the thing you can build your life and depend upon. Jesus says in John 16, you will have troubles. You know, so we know these things are coming. So it makes us go back to that point about what is the foundation of your life? You know, what, have you, um, what are you building it upon? You know, I went through my life for a long period of time thinking I'd built on, on the right things, but actually storms came and blew it all away. And, and it made me refocus and remember and dig down deeper to, to an immovable foundation. That's not to say that it doesn't get difficult, but actually that's the thing I can trust more than anything. Um, you're not alone in that storm. You might be going through storms today and and things might have hit your life, uh, but you are not alone in that storm. Jesus says that he'll never leave us or forsake us and and he's right there with us in the midst, keeping us through. And those storms, like I say, they they, they happen to everybody. Um, And and although it can feel awful, um, the storm will pass eventually as well they're not indefinite they 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 pass and they're for a season and then you move into that other time of the year as as we if you're going to use the analogy of the builders there you know though the waves may come and buffet and they will come and buffet against you we know that if you're in christ your foundations will hold praise god for that they will hold 
They will hold, you know, there's that, again, that song, my anchor holds within the veil because it's Christ. It's not me, it's not my strength. God is building the house. So I'm not, we're not laboring in vain because God's with us and he's the one who's doing that work. If we acknowledge him and we give him the glory for that. So just to, to give you some practical application there, just some, some brief points, just to note down if you're a note taker. The first point, hear the word. Get it into you, whether that's on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday night. You can, there's fantastic resources online to listen to scriptures. But if you're not hearing the Lord, if you're not hearing the word, then you're not going to know what it's going to command you to do or how God's going to speak to you week by week, day by day. Hear the word. That's also looking at your devotional times and your time when you allow God to speak to you, you know, personally through prayer or through meeting with brothers and sisters and having fellowship. Be obedient, second point. Be doers of the word, like James says. Don't just hear what we pray on a Sunday that not only what you hear will, will build you up, but also that you'll go and put it into action, that you'll go and live it out week to week. And that's a real question, though. Sometimes you'll come away and you think, actually, how have I applied that to my life or how have I taken it with me into the week? How am I different or am I changing? Because we should be changing, we should be. Dig deep into the word like I say earlier you will not be disappointed there are riches un unmeasurable in, in his word Jesus has got to be the centre he's got to be that cornerstone he's got to be the reason for living the reason that we, we come to church the reason that we go out and we get up in the morning it's, it's Jesus all for Jesus um, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in that sense you know, it's, it's, it's only about him it's God who builds this isn't like a, a thing where I'm saying afterwards, you need to really go for it, guys, and start working towards building this. It's God who builds by his grace in your life. It's about allowing him to do that. It's nothing that we can, can build on our own. Storms will come. That's the, the sixth point. Storms will come. So get ready now. Get ready now. Dig deep and build that foundation on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because actually, it leads on to the final point, there's a warning for those who don't listen. Because after those storms, the fall is great. And so, praise God that he has given us his spirit, that he has given us his word, he's given us his mind. He's made it possible for us to do this if we would only spend that time with him. If we'd only invest that time that, that we have. And that's different for everyone, and our situations are different, but Jesus is the same. And his power is the same. And what he promises is that if we build our life upon him, it will last through into all eternity. Um, praise God for that. Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your truth. Thank you for your power. Lord, thank you that we can depend upon you. Lord, thank you that it's only through you, Jesus, that we can have access to the Father, that we can have a right relationship. It's only because of what you have done for us on the cross at Calvary. Lord, how you have just, Lord, been willing to be obedient to your own Father, Lord, that we might learn that obedience, to be obedient to you and the truth of your word, Lord, that you might transform us. Lord, we confess our weakness and our sinfulness, Lord, before you, and, and ask, Lord, that you would strengthen us, that you would build our lives, that you'd root us and establish us in grace. Lord, build us up in our faith, we pray. Lord, help us when we are weak, Lord, to be an encouragement to one another. We thank you that, Lord, you are with us. Lord, that we have a sympathetic high priest who knows our frame, who loves us. Jesus, we, we thank you. For, for these words that we can learn from these truths, Lord. Would you help us to dig deep and build foundations upon you this morning and this day and to teach others around us to do the same. Lord, as the storms come in life, Lord, that we might endure them and stand the test of time, giving you praise through it all, Lord, because you are worthy. And Lord, we know that one day we look to... Uh, a heaven and a, and a builder, a, a temple and a, and a building whose maker is God, Lord, we, we look forward to that glorious day, Lord, when you will come again. 
earlier we, we heard that you had to go away, but to prepare a place for us. Lord, what a, what a promise that is. And Lord, we know you are faithful to your word. And you are the faithful one. In Jesus' name. Amen.